Hello and welcome back to this exercise in futility that is complaining about Rocket League advice. Last we spoke, I talked about fundamental mechanics and provided drills on how you can train them. Now I'm aware that going into this video, my gripes with this particular topic might sound eerily similar to some of the advice that I gave in the last video. Some might even feel inclined to call it a double standard. Trust me, these are completely valid and fair criticisms and I graciously accept them should you feel the need to provide them. So in an effort to increase efficiency and reduce reply time, I have prepared a statement in advance for those curious about my potential response. I am going to remind you in advance that I'm very sorry and I apologize for the inconvenience of me not giving a fuck what you think. Learning mechanics takes time. If you're serious about improving in Rocket League, you need to accept the fact that you're going to spend a lot of time practicing. But like anything else, how you practice will affect how you learn. That's why I firmly believe telling someone who's wanting to learn a particular mechanic to just jump into free play and start doing it is next to cousin fucking levels of wrong. It's one of the reasons why I take mechanics tutorials so seriously because as someone who's tried to learn them myself, I get irritated anytime I search for answers dead ends at potential solutions that either exclude the things you need to know before attempting said mechanic or leaving out bits in between because they don't seem relevant. Go ahead and hit that like button if you've sat through a 12 minute unedited YouTube tutorial of someone in free play who ums and rambles their way through explaining something. Oh, and while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and click that Discord link in the description so you can join the DB Hubs community and watch till the end of the video to learn about free access to a live event that I'm going to be hosting. The go into free play and blank advice isn't good advice in my opinion because it doesn't define a proper course of skill progression and heavily discounts a way to build mechanical foundations. Having made and advised a few myself, my philosophy has and always will be that in terms of learning a new mechanic, a training pack that has been specifically tailored to learn and scaffold each part of a mechanic will have a much greater return on learning than just free play alone. But Griff, pros and high level players don't use training packs. Yeah, and Tiger Woods doesn't play public golf courses. Some shit just be different for people at higher levels. The reason training packs exist is to practice specifically curated situations that simulate in-game scenarios. The reason high level players don't use them is because of the amount of time they've put into the game and thus are aware of how to execute nearly every potential situation. Hence their use of free play since it serves as an environment where they have the agency to practice everything rather than one specific thing. That isn't to say they won't spend time grinding a particular mechanic, but their experience of training something like triple flip resets will hardly apply to you if you're still struggling with the basics of air dribbles off the wall. Because learning mechanics in Rocket League is more than just practicing the moves to do them, it takes understanding how how they work and what you have to do to pull them off. This is where training packs truly shine. They provide an opportunity to work on each part of a mechanic in an environment where the variables are always the same and can allow for multiple reps in a short amount of time. Trying to get down the first touch of an air dribble or learning the inputs necessary for a specific flick become a lot more approachable if getting to that part of the mechanic doesn't involve needing to set it up each time. Hell, that's why Psyonix added free play ball controls for everyone because they saw what a massive benefit that alone was to players who had access to Bacchus mod. Now, despite all that shit I just said, I do have to play a devil's advocate to my own advice. I'm aware that training packs are flawed. In terms of their ability to fully train and prepare you for attempting these mechanics in a game, the most they may ever get you is 70 to 80 percent of the way there. Using air dribbles as an example, practicing a shot like this for 10 to 20 minutes might help you gain a better understanding of aerial ball control, but that 80 percent you've gained getting off the wall and into the air doesn't do a damn bit of good if you don't have the 20 percent necessary to actually get to that point. Looking at the earliest settlers and pioneers of Rocket League tutorials, nearly every wall to air dribble tutorial had players spawn into free play initiate the setup, and then attempting the mechanic. In doing so, it forced a strong foundation of wall to air dribble setups before they even got to the point where they were going after it in the air. Wait a minute, that actually sounds like a better way to train. Shouldn't you be responsible for doing the whole thing yourself every time? And this is the premise that makes this whole thing so difficult to argue. I can't deny that free play is one of the best training tools in the game. Rather, what I believe is that players who have reached the point of only using free play to train fail to consider that for someone starting to learn a mechanic or are in need of a specific practice, free play doesn't always deliver. Even though I've reached a similar point in my training where free play occupies the majority of that time, I would say that majority is barely over 60 or 70 percent. When it comes to practicing wall to air dribbles, flip resets, and various other control mechanics, yes, free play is my go-to. But if you're like me and want to practice things like ground to air dribbles, double taps, or ceiling shots, then setting up or using training packs designed specifically for those shots provides a much greater return on your time investment, especially if the setup isn't your 
issue, but rather the execution. An analogy I like to use is comparing Rocket League training to batting in baseball. With baseball, you'd start by putting a ball on a tee and getting down the fundamentals and mechanics behind swinging a bat and hitting a ball. Then you'd progress to someone tossing you a pitch or hitting in a batting cage. Lastly, you would take all that prep and practice into a real game against an opponent whose job is to keep you from hitting that ball. In our case, training packs for t-ball and free play is batting cages. The idea is that once you've reached a level of mechanical proficiency and have learned all the steps needed to do something in a training pack, you should transition to exclusively using free play to train it. The last and easily most overlooked aspect to using training packs is its ability to influence intentional practice. This might sound silly, but sometimes the freedom of free play isn't the best environment to practice something specific. Sure, it's great for warming up and the like, but if your goal is to say, train something like ceiling shots, suppose you struggle with the nuance of the transition from the wall to the ceiling or come up short in the execution portion, running a pack with that shot set up specifically is not only going to help you get multiple reps in, but it's going to guide that training as well. Locking you into a routine where your focus is singular and your brain can begin to quickly pick up on what's working and what isn't. Again, that isn't to say that you can't or shouldn't be using free play to practice these things, but when it comes to training, being specific and intentional about what you train will make a massive difference in your progress. I know plenty of people will have different opinions about this, but you have to keep in mind that what works for one person will not work for everyone. Your personal ability to learn something isn't reflective of the greater player base. It's why I'm as explicit as I can be when teaching someone how to do a specific mechanic, because you never know what tip or explanation is going to provide that aha moment for them. At the end of the day, regardless of how you choose to train, the question you should always be asking yourself is, am I getting as much out of this as I can? As someone who has been able to put more than 10 hours a week into this game, my focus has always been being efficient with that time and maximizing my training within it, which means breaking down each part of a mechanic, training each piece individually, and then refining it where I can. So regardless of what you choose, remember to train with intention and don't be afraid to reset when you notice you're creating bad habits. Thank you all for watching, and for those interested in the event on the DB Hubs Discord server, I'll be live this Monday, Memorial Day, for a free open house stream where I'll be working with viewers to learn and train mechanics. What we learn and discuss is entirely community driven, so if you have questions or want to learn something specific, then this is your chance to come and get real time coaching and feedback. While live events like this are typically limited to premium members, DB Hubs has granted me the privilege of bringing you guys in and offering you a paid level access this holiday for free. So come curious, come hungry, and let's get mechanical.